Hello everyone, welcome back to Build Order Tutorials. This time I have a build for all you Zerg out there. It's gonna be a pool first into solid macro build shown to us by Rainer. So let's get started. Overlord. Keep in mind for you Zergs, whenever I'm not speaking, kind of assume that you're going to be building drones. Pool. Send down a drone to build a 17 hatch. With your pool done, immediately make six lings and a queen and take your gas. Another Overlord. Get back to droning. Fill up your extractor. Those lings should be going across the map to try and get your opponent's command center. Another queen. Another queen. Take one drone out of gas. Get an overlord and another drone out of gas. From this point on, just remember not to be supply blocked. Third hatchery. Start up speed. Another queen. Fill your extractor back up with drones. Get about eight lings, so you can defend against any Hellions. Another queen. Another queen. Two evolution chambers. A few more lings. Another queen.
a few more lings with all your drones. Start up plus one plus one for your melee. Couple more lings. Get two extractors. Build a couple of spore crawlers and get another gas. Start up your lair. At around 60 drones, you should be around there now. Grab your fourth hatchery and a baneling nest. Grab a macro hatchery. Grab about 30 lings. You're preparing for what is probably one of the Terran's first attacks. Overlord speed. Baneling speed. When 1-1 one, one finishes, start up 2-2. Two, two. Grab more lings. Round out your drones to about 70, assuming your fourth base is finishing and focus on making lings. Just pure army production. As the attack moves in, build up some bane lings and start worrying about the attack. Now on to the build discussion. The strengths of this build, it gives you control of the game. So if you like to be in command of your StarCraft II game, then this is one that will give you a little bit of that head start. You can really offset your opponent, especially in the lower leagues. They'll be just learning to put a command center on location, and then, well, you show up with six lings and kind of bop it. You usually won't get a kill on the command center, but you'll definitely offset their build order. There'll be supply blocks. It's probably going to be good for you. It's a good macro build to work off of. The hatch versus pool first difference isn't enough to be like, oh, never do this with a macro build. No, it's actually totally not true. That's why we saw him go into macro. But the other good thing is that this could be taken to a macro build. It can also be taken to a cheese build. A lot of those roach follow-ups that you see in pro games can be awfully fun to learn as well. The weaknesses. An SCD scout will take away most of your power. It actually happened in this game. So you saw Raynor go ahead and split up his lings to try and at least do something, and it worked out okay. This specific build has later baneling speed. The upgrades still come out faster than the Terran, but faster upgrades, maybe you might feel a little bit less comfortable. Faster upgrades are really important, but that also means you have to get a good surround and try and run bys. Baneling speed is a little more a movie, assuming you also get the banelings. And usually this is kind of a all around thing, but Zerg might be one of the more difficult races to just go ahead and purely focus on a build. You're constantly having to react to what they're doing, even if you do get a bit of a head start in the control of this game. So you require a good general gist of how ZDT works so that you don't get surprised by battle cruisers or Hellion drops or Hellbat builds, of which this build in particular would not be so great against since you don't have Banelings, it would require some nice queen and ling control to actually make it work. So just keep that in mind. There are other builds out there where you can get the Baneling nests faster and feel a little more secure. On to the tips and tricks. You can change up the amount of lings you get in that initial build. You know, we got six lings here, but you'll see other pros do two or four. 
Use your lings at different timings. Split up your lings. Two go into the command center and then four just like stick around or vice versa. Hold off on showing them initially so they scout you and then you don't do anything and it's possible because you were scouted you didn't make any lings. And then 20 seconds later they surprise your opponent and while well, they can't stall the command center anymore they can still grab an SCV or a mule. You'll see that a lot in pro games. Use your early links to scout medevac or liberator paths or hellions. So basically just one link outside the base and one link kind of like, for instance, on Golden Wall to the south of it, as much as you can, I guess, with the, uh, <laughs> the mineral wall being up, right? But if you can, you don't have to necessarily get that direct scout into the main base, especially if your overlord is being denied by a marine, but a link seeing something will be enough heads up for you to do something about it. Faster overlord speed can help if you don't feel comfortable in ZVT, so if you always lose to Hellbat attacks unless you have those Banelings or Hell Roaches, then maybe go for a faster overlord speed instead of that sp oh, Ling speed, and let your queens do a lot of the work when it comes to defense. If you don't get a very good scout, then just assume to make 20-ish lings for the Hellions, and about two spore crawlers maybe go ahead and make the three, so one per base or one main one third, because that's typically where you'll have like a Liberator or Banshee attacks really start up. And that does it! Hopefully this helps you streamline your Zerg versus Terran a little bit more. It's very helpful to have these upgrade timings and baneling timings, actually, but from my experience, I know exactly when you can get away with droning. So just make sure to constantly be hitting your larva, hitting your eggs here. That's the number one goal of Zerg is to never not be using your larva. And have fun on the ladder, guys. See ya.